another episode of Talk the Talk. Today I'm driving Craig's 1993 Nissan Pulsar. But this isn't just any Nissan Pulsar. It's a GTIR. And it's not just any GTIR. It's an RB Autec version. Now, I don't blame you if you don't know what that is because I didn't until Craig contacted me seeing if I wanted to review this car. Essentially, it was made for homologation purposes so they could enter the Pulsar into the rally. So you could say it's a road going rally car. What makes it a rally type car you might ask? Well, it's got no air conditioning, it's got no power windows, it's got no ABS. So it's a really raw, no bullshit driver's car. Being the rally going version, they did make this the bare bones car. And what that meant was getting your bottom of the range interior and putting it into this car. So what Craig has actually done, he's changed over the seats to your standard series one. I think it was the RA, correct me if I'm wrong, or I will here anyway, in the screen by the side. But these actually do have a lot nicer bolster to them for your bum and for your sides. So you do stick in the car a lot nicer. Now you might be thinking, well, if they're going like a rally version, why the hell are you doing seats that can't support you from factory if it's supposed to be that type of a car that you're gonna be throwing around? Well, they essentially figured people would buy the cars, rip out the seats, and put in some Recaros or something similar that's a real racing seat. Now, the GTIR, it's got the SR20 DET engine, which is Nissan's two liter turbo engine, which was commonly used in a lot of 90s Japanese sports cars that they made. Now, it's not like your standard SR20 DET though. On top of your standard one, this one's actually got a larger crank, bigger oil pump, higher flowing heads, individual throttle bodies, which equates to 169 kilowatts at the engine from factory. This, along with the all-wheel drive system, is what got this car its nickname, Baby Godzilla. Now, Craig's actually done a bit of tweaking to this car, and currently he's making 208 kilowatts at all four wheels. That's thanks to a big-ass front-mount intercooler, in replacement of your top-mount intercooler that these had from factory, a three-inch turbo back exhaust system, and an IsTune board. So this thing really does boogie and it's a nice little addition of power compared to what the factory one was. And it's got that little flutter which is absolutely beautiful. Love that on turbo cars. Talking about turbos, which I probably should have mentioned at the top of the mod list, this turbo has been upgraded. It's got a 2871 turbo. So that does really add the additional power quite nicely to the car. At a factory, these did have a T28 turbo, which was very similar to what they ran in the S14 Silvias, but it was a little bit bigger from factory compared to that as well. So this is one tiny but mighty machine. So we'll drop a gear down anyway. That clutch really grabs nicely. It's a button clutch, but it is cushioned, so it's not too hard to get off the line. Holding it a four, we'll roll into it after the corner. Four and a half, and get into it between. It's got nice little pullback, little bit of wheel spin at the front wheels, but not too bad. This car here, they do say, which I read up on a little bit of, the handling isn't too great for understeer wise, but this does have some additional handling modifications as well. So from factory, this was opted out with the Nismo front and rear strut tower brace. So it stiffens the body up a lot. And also Craig has put on some white line sway bars front and rear, which I've run on a few of my cars personally. And I do really like the handling addition that they add to this car. He's also got some Coney, whew, some Coney adjustables that have been mated to the factory suspension as well, which does make it that bit more nimble as well, bit more direct. And honestly, I'm not really feeling any understeer in this car. So this one here is a bit of a curve, not so much a real corner, but a little bit of a tighter one coming up. Wind her out a little bit just before it, pick up some speed. This is very, very, yep. Your point and turn, this is actually nice and nimble. 
and this car only weighs 1190 kilograms. So from factory, your standard GTIR was about 30 kilos more. Stripping it out, making it the rally spec edition, you save that 30 kilos. Not a huge amount, but when you think about it, it's a fair few slices of pizza that you gotta eat to add on that. So I just wanna now really get a feel of when this boost comes in. Just cruising at two, flat foot. By about four, she just really starts to rip. Comes in slightly earlier than that. But um, once she rips, just keeps on winding out. It's actually, it's quite revvy. <laughs> quite revvy this engine and you know with the individual throttle body and your higher flowing heads and the exhaust system as I mentioned before everything just really nicely builds up power wise so there's not a huge amount of lag like you know getting on and off the throttle will check turbo seems to spool up nicely even when you're punching it on and off so when you're trying to get out of that corner you're not really delaying much. You know you got the power pretty much instantly. So it's very nice. Take a few more of these bends a little bit more spirited. Again, this handling is very nice. Feeling a little bit of the understeer there. But from what others have described, the factory ones are, this actually isn't all that bad. So while it's coming back to me, a few other rally things that this car does have that was a factory option, a bash plate up front, a bash plate at the rear, and also a half cage and a full cage was an option from factory. So Craig actually has a half cage for this, it's just not bolted in at the moment, but I must imagine that once he has that in and he's cruising around even these roads here where you can have a little bit of fun, you would feel like Colin McRae going around here. Aesthetically, Craig, he hasn't done much to the car. It's quite aggressive from factory, and they do have a lot of additions from factory on it. So that hood there with all the scoops and the vents, that's all stock. What he has done, for the front opening, he's made it larger to fit that big ass front mount intercooler. So it does look very menacing when it's coming up behind you. And also, he has changed the color of the factory wheels that came with the car. And the color code, what he did was try to match what the R32 GTR wheel colors were. So I like that, little bit of a nice touch, not to its big brother, and also keeps within the Nissan family of things. 1993, you gotta remember, that is now 27 years ago. These cars are getting old, but with a few little modifications on top of the great car that it was out of factory, you can make these things a lot of fun. And really, it is worth spending a bit of money on these things. As you've probably seen recently, even prior to COVID, some of these 90s Jap cars, early 2000s Jap cars, they're just going up and up and up in value. There we go, you feel that turbo spooling up, a little bit of a push behind you. For a two litre, honestly, it feels quite torquey. And as I said before, the power comes in very, very nicely. It's not too aggressive, doesn't really kick you in the back of the head, but smooth and a lot of force behind it. Getting down here, downshift, third gear, rev match, 80 k's an hour around the corner here. Falling off boost a little bit, but we'll wind her out. And again, she just builds up so nicely. These brakes are quite body as well, and honestly, you don't need much for it being a car that's under 1,200 kilos. It is factory calipers. He's upgraded your rotors and your pads as well. Um, I can't remember for the life of me what it was, apologies, but here's a little bit of a listing over here to say exactly what it was. So, back to third, hold her around four and a half grand, plant it, five and a half, six. She just keeps winding out. Take this corner a little bit quicker. Feeling a bit more of that understeer, so I don't want to push it too, too hard. Maybe we'll try second, keep the revs up, get that power coming in, but not going too quick. Again, she is agile though. If you're not getting any of that understeer, it does really just point and turn. All right, let's go around these nice big curves. Wind her out a little bit more. We've got a really nice stretch of road here. 
Your hero's stalling up a little bit at the higher revs. I'm not sure if that's the way it's tuned or just the way that there's no more puff in the actual engine and car, but honestly, you drive this thing between four and 6,000 RPM, and that's where you're really gonna have a lot of your fun. So, hard on the brakes here, feeling a little bit of fade because we've been driving her a bit hard, but won't take her too hard just before the corners. There we go, this is, it holds speed very nicely. It does really feel like a sort of after car, and look, there's enough cushion in everything to make it bearable for a daily, but enough soul to it to actually make it exciting, unlike a lot of these newer cars that are just made for comfort and so-called sports car, but they want to appeal to the masses so they can sell more of them. I'd rather something raw, really to the point, and you can tell this car was made for that. And we're gonna do a little bit of a launch, nothing too harsh on it, it's a little bit uphill. So let's go for it. A little bit of bog off the line, but that's just because I wasn't going too hard. Second gear, winder out to 7,000 RPM. We're up to 100. Look, for a little two liter, this thing sure is a lot of fun. Channel's called Talk the Talk. I love my talk, but this thing's zippy. That was up a hill as well. Didn't really get any traction loss. And look, she wound out very, very nicely. I'm Craig, this is my 1993 GTI RB Autec. It's uh, one of 39, and it's quite rare in black. Um, got the car about five years ago, sort of when the kid came along, had to get out of bikes, so bought a car. Uh, plans were to do some track days and stuff, didn't quite get around to that. Got it painted, sort of bits of precious now. <laughs> um, a few things I like about the car, it's sort of just the way it drives, it just squats and goes, you know, no messing about. I've had rear wheel drive cars that with less power get a bit wild, whereas this thing it just sort of just nice and smooth drives. Um, a few things I might change about the car would be probably, I've got white line sway bars on it now, I might change to the front runner motorsport ones, they're developed by an owner, so they're a bit better. Um, before we get another set of 15 inch wheels, because the car just drives so much better on 15 inch wheels. And uh, yeah, maybe ceramic coat, not much else about that. I want to keep it sort of reasonable. Well, that wraps up another episode, guys. Thank you very much for tuning in and watching. Thank you very much to Craig for approaching me and letting me drive his awesome little toy. Until next time, I'll catch you around, drive safe, and make sure you have plenty of fun in between. <laughs>